Hello, welcome to Two as One. My name is Charles Opio with my wife Susan. We are discussing matters marriage, the different dynamics within marriage, the principles within marriage. I'm assuming by now that for you to be watching this segment, you've watched our other four segments where we broke down clearly the different concepts from the origin of marriage, God's plan, God's purpose, God's strategy, and why God instituted it. We spoke comprehensively about who the wife was and where the breach came with the enemy, about Ezra, the helpmate, the one who's supposed to help you fulfill your mandate. We left on a high note speaking about men and how men need to arise and get back into the presence and into the wisdom of God and for women to be able to help them to get back there and where there is a woman outside of that where if the man positions himself, the woman will position herself. So I've given you one minute of four sessions <laughs> just to help you catch up with us. Yeah. But for us to now go into this segment, we want to deal with what is the solution. We talked about marriage A and marriage B. Marriage A being what was supposed to have been in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and marriage B, chapter 3, where things went wrong. Now, how do we recover from that? How do we get back into the original order? To do that, we need to look into the New Testament and look at what it is that was spoken to us by the Apostle Paul, by other writers, on how to correct this and how even that has been, been misinterpreted from a marriage B position. Too many people read the scriptures we're about to discuss from Genesis chapter 3 perspective, and they miss the whole context of what's being said. Susan. I think it's important for us to realize that um, marriage A and marriage B is a whole world of difference. So we cannot address the issues of marriage A standing from position of marriage B. Neither can we be positioning ourselves from marriage A and talking to marriage B. If you're marriage B, it's important to say, wait a minute, there are questions I cannot ask from this position. Neither the blessings of marriage A expect them in marriage B, True. because that's another thing that we do. Yes. So when we read and say wives, we are like, wait, there are two kinds of wives. Yes. So which wife are we talking to? Are we talking to the wives of marriage A or marriage B? So when we talk about wives, we are not addressi addressing all wives. We are addressing wives in marriage A. So when the Bible talks and says husbands, it's not talking to married men. It's talking to men whose lives are patterned after Christ. So it's important to... Or at least to, on a minimum, yes, who have desired to go. to go back to original order. Yes, so yes. you do not interpret the Bible from a cultural perspective. Yes. So we don't just jump because culture jumps into the Bible, yes. picks something and gets out. Absolutely. And when it talks about wives, because um, I want something from my wife, I'll go to the Bible and pick for her something and then quote it for and her and tell her the Bible says. Yes. So when the Bible is talking, it's talking to a people who are already on their journey back to marriage A. It's crucial to understand that yeah. God speaks from where he is not where we are. He doesn't come to us. Yes. So it's us who need to move back to where God is. And this is what uh, Ephesians 5, 22 says. Wives, submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Okay? For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So as Christ is the head of the church, already that tells us we cannot pull that yes. into a cultural yes. understanding or Absolutely. preferences. Absolutely. So verse 25 says, And husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself as a, a glorious church, not having spot, wrinkle or any such thing, but that she might be holy and without blemish. So wow. like we are saying now, let us look at this scripture, but from the perspective of position A, which yes. is Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. When man fell, he reinterpreted this scripture. And what submission is, when we have wives are told, submit to your own husband, I think from position 3, uh, chapter 3 of the Bible of Genesis, the wife do not want to, re, uh, to submit. Yes, because they are looking at the husband they have. Mm -hmm. See, we need to see this in perspective. Paul is talking on a position in the kingdom called husbands. Husband, yes. And another position in the kingdom called 
wives. And why is he saying that? Because who is the origin, as we have seen before? God. God. Yes. So God had this clear perspective mm -hmm. of how this should operate. So Paul is not responding to the situation people are in. Oh yes, that's important to note. He's not responding. Mm. He's giving the definition of how the position should be. Okay. See, first, if we understand that, we'll stop all the debates of you don't know what kind of a husband I have. You don't know what, you don't know what kind of a wife, of a wife I, have. I have. Yes. That is not the discussion in mm. context. Mm. The discussion in context here is we are talking marriage. In marriage, we are talking about the correct order. Yes. Paul is basically telling you, mm -hmm. use this measurement to check where you are. Yes. Use this thing to query your position. Mm. The problem is that we want to hear that scripture in the context of our self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. I want to hear that scripture in the position of, see, tell the husbands what it's saying they should do to me. Mm. No, you are not the wife that they are talking about. I think that's the other thing. Say that again. You because see? half <laughs> the time I'm like, no, the Bible says you should submit to your own husband. And the wife is saying, mm. mm, -mm. The, the husband is saying, mm. she's not submitting to me. Yes. And I think somebody needs to tell him, Bible is not, Bible talking, is not you talking about him. At all. Adjust yourself, correct yes. yourself. The same thing with the wife. Yes. Uh, he's not loving me because the Bible says he should love me. No, yes. he's not talking to you. The kind of wife you have become cannot be yes. loved. Not because Absolutely. you're evil, but because you're standing on the wrong position. Exactly. So love cannot even flow. Yes. Husband, submission can ca not come your way from that position. Yes. So the first thing and the most important is realignment. Now here's the paradox. Mm -hmm. The paradox is that that scripture to husbands is not for wives to use to measure their husband. Yes. That scripture <laughs> on wives is not for husbands to use to measure their wives. Yes. Both of you are looking at the wrong scripture. Okay. <laughs> the scripture to husbands is to husbands, not to wives. Love your wives. Simple. So the wife should not read that to her Don't husband. Don't read it to your husband. It's not a, a <laughs> message from you to your husband. Yes. No, 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 no. It is a position mm. God has created for the husband. In the last segment, we mm. said that a husband should find his assignment. In this relationship, he's being told how to find his assignment. Mm. Husbands, Position yourself in a place called love your wife. Mm -hmm. This is not conditional on her behavior. Yes. It is not conditional on the present scenario. Mm -hmm. It is not in response to anything she has done. And it is not about your feelings. Nothing. I don't feel like loving her. God I is don't feel. telling you, step into a posture called love. husband. Mm -hmm. From that posture, your attitude, your behavior towards your wife is love, irrelevant of who that wife is. Mm. The same scripture is speaking to husband, to wives, to wives yes. and saying, enter this posture called submit. Mm. We'll be discussing the details of both. Yes. Position yourself in that place, mm -hmm. irrelevant of who your husband is. Mm. So while the paradox is, God is not saying submit to this husband in the way he's behaving. Yes. He's saying position yourself in a position called wife. So let's go back here. Let's get this clear. Yes. The wife must be desiring God. Yes. And a godly marriage. Exactly. The husband should be desiring God and yes. a godly marriage. Yes. Now you cannot take this scripture and quote to a couple that is in the culture. Absolutely. Or tradition. Absolutely. Or religion. Absolutely. So this is not for just everyone. Yes. This is for a couple that have sat together and said, listen, we don't like where we are. Simple. We are not enjoying our marriage. Yes. You don't enjoy me, I don't enjoy you. Yes. Can we sort out our lives? So this scripture is not for every marriage. I no. think that's important to note. No. Yeah. And remember where the fall had a problem. Yeah. Your desire will be for your husband and you will rule over, over her. her, yeah. That conversation cannot come into this conversation. Mm. Th so the people in um, Genesis 3.16 cannot, cannot quote this, this for each other. They can't because mm. they are coming from there. They are already in the wrong position. The person in Genesis 3 mm -hmm. is a husband who will only read the wife's side of the story. Okay. A wife in Genesis 3 will only respond to the husband. Remember what's your desire to mm. rule. So mm. you're designing how to be taken care of. Yes. This other one is subjugate. So mm -hmm. you're designing, you can take the same scripture and turn it into evil. Yes. And that's how these two scriptures have been abused for a long time. Because each spouse is standing in the wrong place. Exactly. But they are quoting to each other, but they are not doing their part. Nobody's doing their part. Uh -huh. Now the way to turn this is this. Do I want my wife 
to be that wife, mm. then I better become the husband that attracts that wife. Because I think that's another p powerful thing. A man could be asking for submission, but is he the kind of man who should be submitted to? Simple. The wife is asking for love. Mm. Are you the kind of wife that, that a man love. can love? That's what this is all about. So this is self-examination. That is why it starts clearly mm -hmm. by Paul outlining husbands. You see, he's talking to them. Yes. Wives, he's talking to them. Mm. So the first question you must ask, am I a husband? Am I a wife? Yes. I may be married. Yes. Am I a husband? Mm. See, many people are married. They are not husbands. You tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible here is giving us the description of a husband. Mm. I told you earlier that when we people fell, they were given roles. Okay. This is the problem. So the devil interfered, distorted the image of God, and then after that, he gave them, he took what was theirs and gave them what was his. Simple. Now, this desire he gave them, it's a desire that is centered on self. Simple. So when you come to this scripture, it's all about self. So that's what you're saying it. now, the husband, you're not yet a husband if you're still quoting this to your wife. What did I say is how do you deal with the spirit of the world, the flesh, you kill it. You kill flesh. These two scriptures are killers. Mm. They are killers of flesh. Mm. When a husband submits to this scripture, mm. he has to die. To self. What does it even go on to say? Mm. Christ, like Christ loved the church and gave up himself for her. Mm. That is death. So you cannot operate self and love your wife. You cannot operate self and submit to your impossible. husband. Impossible. It's impossible. It is impossible. In fact, that is the core problem. Mm. Most marriage counselors mistakenly are asking foreigners to act like another nation. Mm. So they are not citizen citizens? And you you're, can't. You and no you're promising rights them the rights of, of a, a citizen. citizenship. They mm -hmm. can't get it. Mm -hmm. You cannot go and instruct a husband to love his wife. You, it's not an instruction. Mm. It's a reality. It's a state of being. Yes, you can't start telling a woman, now when you go and get married, you must submit to this man. You can't. That is not what the Bible didn't say submit to this man. Mm. It said submit to your husband. Mm. So he say, must be Yes, he didn't say love this woman. Yes. He said love your wife. Mm. First, become a wife. Mm -hmm. Become a husband. Yes. If you become a husband, there'll be no instruction. Submission it is your automatic. nature. Yeah to love like that. Mm. If you become my wife, it is your nature. So are we saying that if I am finding it so hard to submit, I need to check myself, am I a wife? Because outside of a wife, you are unable to submit. But husbands, let me raise the bar. Mm -hmm. For while we were yet, sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. He was not responding to us. Mm. We are the ones who respond to him. He is love. When he releases love, we respond by submitting to him. Mm. That's the body of Christ. Yes. The body of Christ doesn't submit to Christ and then he loves us. Mm -hmm. He loved us, died for us, therefore we submitted. Mm. If you are a sinner and you submit, you access his love. Mm. It is a cyclic movement. So you're saying that the love is constant yes. from a husband? Constant. And that love will attract submission. There's Absolutely. no way you can love your wife and she does not submit. Because love, the kind of love that God is talking about, love your wives, the kind of love that I'm saying release to your wives will definitely activate the submission in her. Simple. If a wife is there and she's saying, listen, I want, I'm desiring God. I'm desiring to be in a marriage that is godly. The minute I start submitting, it automatically activates love. So nobody needs to tell each other. Can you imagine? Uh -huh. These scriptures are so powerful because there's a place where it says, woman, submit to your own husband that in your submission he will get to know the Lord. That's how powerful submission is. But how powerful is. it is. So it is not an action. It's a no. state of being. It's a So reality. submission, I think, also maybe we need to talk about that. If you talk to many people, they have been told that submission is me coming to make sure that I serve you food. Am I an invalid? No, well. let's, let's be very practical. <laughs> You know, what has food got to do with submission? The maid can do it. Is she submitted to me? But I think also, maybe a bigger, uh, <laughs> a better question also, is when I'm told to serve you, maybe this is where confusion comes, because I was told when I serve you food, that is submission. That is not when submission. When I wash your clothes, that's submission. But I'll ask a question. If this man is working, the whole day he's been working, and he comes home in the evening, but during lunch hour, he had food somewhere, 
I did not serve that food. So whoever served him food, is that his wife? Is she submitted to him? Now that is the uh, warped Remember message what I said? that is passed after when Genesis Gen 3. When you're in Genesis 3, yes. you filter scripture through Genesis 3. The fallen perspective. So you've got a Genesis 3 couple yes. trying to operate Ephesians 5. Mm. It cannot work. Does that mean also you have a fallen couple yes. trying to operate uh, biblical principles? It, no, let me put it a, a different way. Mm -hmm. It is trying to use um, it's trying to use South African money in Nairobi. And you wonder why it's not working. And you wonder why you can't buy anything. Because those two countries are not connected. Mm. It is, listen, submission, Ezra, because Ezra is about submission. Mm -hmm. When you come to partner with me, you're submitting to what God gave me. All right? Yes. The woman was designed to submit to the purposes of God in my life not to submit to me. I think that's important. Okay, wait. I'm not submitting to the man I'm married to. Never. I'm submitting to the vision, to the God in him. Absolutely. So I have to see God in you. Let, let's, let's look at this in context. Mm -hmm. I have a purpose. I am called by God to equip young people this is hypothetical. Yes. To equip young people on how to either do business or let's assume it was music. Yes. To worship God. Mm -hmm. If you're an Ezra, what should be your natural gifting? Mm -hmm. Coming alongside me to work with these young people until they can worship God. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I go to my role, which is what we've changed it to, yes. where I work with these young people. Then I come home, you serve me food. Then I say you're submissive. No, you're in disorder. Hmm. My submission should be to the call of God in your life. Not to basic, petty, fleshy things like food. Which can be... Anywhere. Every, every waiter then is submitted to me. I must have many wives. <laughs> I mean, let, let's be pretty <laughs> clear about these things. So submission is not... Well, what the devil does, he tries to belittle spiritual things by twisting them into simple material activities. Yes, which actually makes somebody feel like they're really doing something. Yes. Another thing he does And maybe I need to bring rest to some women. Yeah. There are women who do not love cooking. Mm -hmm. Cooking is not a gift to women. Yes. It's a cultural behavior. There are many who don't love it at all. Are we all. together? But they are so efficient in other things. In something else. That yeah. they don't need to be cooking. Mm. So this idea of cloning every woman into a cook. Yes. That is not the kingdom of God. That is, that is there are women who image. love cooking. Mm -hmm. That's all they want to do. And Please don't confine them to the kitchen. Yes. Expand their cooking into something bigger than the kitchen. Than just food These for two people. These are the purposes of God. Yeah. We have to go beyond these basic concepts of submission. So I think I, I like that concept of I'm submitting to the vision, to the purposes of God in your life. Yes. And that is the only way I will go beyond all your failures because every time you find a couple, of course, there are flaws in my life, there are flaws in your life, but if I am hindered by the flaws, I will not be able to submit to you. Yes. But if I go beyond and realize that beyond the flaws is a vision that God has placed there, beyond the flaws, there's a place that we are going, there's a purpose of God in your life, and that's what I'm submitted to. I'm so committed to see going to fulfill that. In fact, for women, mm. they need to resolve the Mary Martha paradox. Okay. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. Where we need to look at both things. Jesus calls one good, calls the other better. Okay. So the principle means you should have both. Yes. Not either. Yes. The principle is this. Mm -hmm. One sister complains to Jesus. I am busy preparing food. Tell my sister to come mm. and help me. Yes. The other, Jesus says, she has, the one who is not cooking mm -hmm. has chosen the better, the better thing. Yeah. Not that that one is bad, but this is the principle. Mm. And I'll use a basic example with me and my wife. My wife loves cooking, absolutely. Loves mm. hosting, cooking, and everything. But there's no day where she's in the kitchen cooking and I'm teaching. Mm. And I have people in the house who are talking. Mm. No, 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 no. You cook, you finish. You finish when there is By a the teaching. By the time they arrive, we all, we all sit, sit down, down and yeah. we're all part of this. So we mm. do not separate that I'm busy doing one thing. Mm. This people meeting me, the people coming to visit me, that I'm coming to speak to, say we have a leadership meeting, yes. that is the priority call. Yes. But do we need to prepare for them? Yes. yes. 
in some options, you can hire someone in an options. She loves cooking. She'll cook for them herself. Mm. But that doesn't mean the cooking takes her away from, from her primary call. Yes. The day it does that, then we've gone into subjugation. Yes. Because I think it's, uh, it's um, something that happens a lot where you find the women in the kitchen mm -hmm. and the discussion is going on. But this discussion is a life building. It's something that God is trying to talk to this Everybody. whole group of people who yes. are coming together. So the woman is missing out mm -hmm. in the name of submission. Again, like I just said on a lighter note, that when you say ironing your clothes is submission or maybe putting water for you to bathe, listen, the world has changed. <laughs> Nowadays we have his and her bathroom. I don't need to put water. I don't even know what I'm putting water on. I don't yes. keep buckets. So now that we have showers, how do I put water for you? Yes. Now that you are told, okay, <laughs> wait, uh, you need to go and iron. Listen, we have mechanisms and we have technology to make sure these things are done. I don't have to do it. Life has moved on. But when we go back to the 60s and the 50s and take what our parents and our grandparents used to do and transport pause it into 2019, uh, I think that's where we go wrong. And then we so call when it we say, yes, when we say serve, what about when we have guests? Now you still see people where we serve food, and I mean all the dishes, uh, they have food there, everybody go and serve themselves. But you still see this husband sitting down in his own house, all the guests are serving themselves, but he has to wait to be served. Why? So that the wife can be submissive. Let's, let's bust a traditional bubble right here. Yeah. Who washed the disciples' feet? Jesus. Who broke bread? <laughs> Jesus. Who served the disciples? <laughs> the Savior, you God want to lead himself. be like Jesus. Yes. This behavior of sitting down and being fed is called laziness. I think so. I In think the that's name an of African, kingdom. That's an African. It's an African demon. Yes. It needs to be dealt with. Yeah. Because if you're the head and the leader, you set the platform. And what are you teaching your children? Yes. The kingdom is a different place. Yes. If you want to be great in the kingdom, serve. So, how will your children learn how to serve if they don't see it from you? I think there's someone watching here and they just need to do only one thing. Tonight, serve your wife. Yes. Just serve your wife. Maybe you've never done that because culture says she needs to serve. Subjugation. Because you think, yeah. you think your power mm. comes through. through your wife feeding you. Yeah. Listen, your wife can feed you with a bad heart, my <laughs> friend. There's nothing special in <laughs> There's that. There's nothing about There's that. There's nothing special in that. In fact, she resents you every time she's serving you. Yeah. I would rather she served you with a pure heart, enjoying what she's doing. And I think that powerful, pure heart will come from the fact that I have seen God in you. Yes. I've seen the vision of God. I have seen how much committed you are to the things of God. And that's what I'm following. That is what I'm committed for. And when it comes to flows, I will ignore everything out here. Even my service now, will not be based on serve your husband. It will be based on, listen, where we are going, we don't even know who serves who. It has become so flawless. Line. Yeah, there's so nothing like so you serve me, I serve you. Because the primary thing, the thing that would worry me at the end of a day, end of a week, end of a month, have we missed the things God called me to do? Have you partnered with me in those things? Mm -hmm. That is what is most crucial. Yes. Part of what God has called me to do is to speak into the lives of people, mm. to speak into marriages. If I was sitting here busy speaking marriage and you're not sitting here today, and then I came home and you served me a hot meal, failure. We've not done anything for the kingdom. This is the new idea we need to bring into the body. Mm. This is what we were created for. So when you say husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. The primary love, let me explain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The primary love is to bring your wife into God's environment. Wow. That is, that is, that's the primary that's, love. That's powerful because today if you check in most um, uh, spiritual environments, the men are gone. And I say gone, I mean in the spirit they have moved a step or two or three ahead of their wives. And I think like what we started by saying, when you keep the woman down and tell her the things of God are not meant for you. Yes. So when we talk of kingdom, we are saying the men go and preach, the women come and feed all the guests and everything. I think that is wrong. Yes, yes. So the first love, like what you, I, mean, I think yeah. you need to repeat that. The first love is to bring, let me tell you, when Jesus died, what was he to do? Mm. To reconcile us to God. Yes. That's his first love, for God so loved the world. Mm. So that none of us may perish but have Everlasting life. The life of God. So that's what his love is about. Wow. That's what he brought us into. Mm. He died to bring us. What was his prayer before he left the earth? Father, mm. I pray that they are one as we are one. Mm. Them in us, us in them. Mm. So that is the primary thing. 
So before I br b first I must find God. Yes. Then I must bring my wife mm. into God's environment. Yes. From there we can talk of everything. Wow. So what is she submitting to? The environment of the kingdom I've brought her to. Not to me. Yes. I am I am just the, the partner that she walks with in submission to what God is saying. And that makes life so simple and beautiful for everyone. It's so easy and makes marriage beautiful. Yes. Because when I'm given these um, lines that you must submit like this, all those natural things, sometimes you do them and you, you have this you emptiness in you. Yeah. You have so much emptiness that I am serving, I am doing this, but I'm still not feeling the either the love or the fulfillment can, or the satisfaction can, can we in call God. It, can we call it yeah. by its true name, mm. subjugation? Subjugation, that well, is not... Which, which simply means this, yes. ruling over. Mm. When I rule over you, I am the center. And everything you do, you do for me. Yes. When we talk about manipulation, mm. you are the center. Mm -hmm. And everything I do, I do for, for you. Me. Not self. We've already refocused. Mm. And why is self such a dangerous thing? That's how the devil was created. In Isaiah it says, How are you so cut down, O Lucifer, son of the morning? You who said to you are self self ar arose i will arise mm. i will be mm. i will become i will when everything is built on i will then we've received exactly what he wanted what he gave adam in the first place i mean that kind of a marriage yes kingdom cannot thrive the kingdom cannot thrive the yeah. battle is about who is doing what for who mm. so when the when a woman stands up and asks what are you doing with your life how how are you providing for us yes see the principle Pulling everything to the natural. Yes. And then the man, why can't you listen to me? So the minute you come God. to the natural, you operate in self. And that is the playground of Genesis the devil. Genesis 3. He loves it. Maybe you need to tell us. Where there is strife. Yeah. There, there is every evil thing. Every. Every. Not some. Not some. So every activity we do, we'll find evil. Yes. What is strife? Mm. Strife is me, myself, and I versus you, yourself, and you. Do you want to summarize for us this session? I think the best way to look at the end of this story is this. First of all, as we continue to unlock Ephesians 5, let's get it clear. Husbands, men, are you a husband? Mm -hmm. A husband is not a married man. Okay. A husband is somebody who's not, not who has a wedding and has children. Mm. It's just like a father is not somebody who has children. Mm. Mm. It's true. A father is a whole different dynamic. Many people have been fathered by people who are not their biological fathers. Mm. So yes, the biological context. fathers exist. Yes. So that is what we are saying. Mm -hmm. In the same way, women are you wives. In fact, scripture makes it worse. It says, he who finds a wife, meaning you are a wife before you are married. Mm. Can we put all these things into context yeah. and stop changing the model? Mm. So if you are a wife, you have been a, you've got a built-in capacity called Ezra. A capacity to bring out everything that God has desired when you find your Adam. Yeah. Stay tuned as we continue with this.